I would love if you could kind of walk through how does that editorial calendar process work in a university like Purdue? So does each college kind of have their own uh, social handles? And then if they want to have something go out from the real just mm -hmm. at Purdue, how, how does all that type of thing work? Sure. So we do have, a, as I know I mentioned before, Purdue News Service, and their main goal is to really look at how can we tell the story of research initiatives, higher level announcements, larger university announcements. And so a lot of the the stories that they're writing actually do come from all across campus, but not every single story, because obviously when we're telling student profiles and things like that, um, not all of those are going through Purdue News Service. So what I'm actually working on right now, we do have a list of all of the registered Purdue University accounts from across campus for social media. And we're working on making sure that those are updated as well. Um, so that's my project for hopefully June. We've started getting everyone registered, but then we need to make sure that we're updating the website as well. But one thing that we actually started doing a few weeks ago, um, well, if we rewind a little bit further back in January, uh, Purdue actually had a new brand launch and we had a refreshed logo and just kind of changing our brand voice and how we talk about Purdue University and also helping to educate all of our campus communicators to make sure that they understood how can they take the Purdue brand voice and make it specific to their particular college or department. And so now what we've done out of that brand voice and the new brand launch, there were specific pillars of themes that came out of that. And so for the next 16 weeks, we actually have specific themes. Um, each theme is for two weeks. And my team actually puts together a whole week's worth of content for uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, and then we also have some additional video content that's posted to um, YouTube, but you can also share those to the respective channels. And so what we've seen from that is we're helping give campus departments their own way to talk about the theme and how it actually works for them. Like we're not saying you have to use this exact post, but we're giving ideas each week on how they can talk about the theme and how they can fit within it. And we first did this uh, last year, Purdue was celebrating its 150th anniversary. And so one thing that really came out of that was this unified content messaging platform. And so we wanted to bring that back because there had been such great success with it. And so that has really helped us become unified in our messaging because we're all on the same page. We're talking about the same theme. Um, it also helps make sure that the campus communicators are remembering when Founders Day is or that Memorial Day is coming up and just making sure that, oh no, we have to scramble and come up with content ideas. We're trying to make sure that people have enough time to be proactive rather than reactive to the content ideas. But I'm curious, because I know it's, it's something that our, our listeners are thinking about is, sure. how do you wrestle and reconcile, you know, the, the serious situation that we're in, but also recognizing mm -hmm. we, we need to share the other stories of Purdue University? That is obviously a real challenge. And I feel like our students, I don't know, I guess I'm on a few other um, Facebook message boards for higher ed. And I feel like the reaction at some universities has been very different than ours. I'm not, I'm not sure why. Um, I know that, that sometimes delivering a message such as your classes are now going to be online. Some people can internalize that in different ways than others. It's not an easy message to try and, and, and send out to students, but I feel like, as we've thought about how do we balance, you know, the realities of the situation with also honoring the fact that students are still doing amazing things, they're doing these great projects, they're doing research. And so the way that we've been able to balance that is thinking about like, what are the university announcements that we have? have to get out, what are the really exciting research developments that we have, like, we're lucky that we have that research component where 
Purdue is really trying to give back, whether it's through 3D printing of medical equipment or working on new types of drugs that can be used. So I know that not every university also has that balance, but then also thinking about how can we keep looking to the future because we know our admitted students are really the future also of our organization. And so that's really been a balance that works for us. When bringing a levity, there is a chance that it could go so right, such as in the case of Animal Crossing. And then there's mm -hmm. also the chance it could go so wrong, which is obviously never mm -hmm. anyone's intended consequence of what happens. But how do you pick and choose what sort of pop culture moments to play up, how to bring some levity, and how to really bring balance mm -hmm. in these crazy times? I think that when I'm looking at something that has a pop culture reference, I always try and make sure, like, is there a Purdue connection in some way? Then I feel like it's more, then the audience can connect with it. But if it was just, hey, are you guys playing Animal Crossing right now while you're stuck at home? That might not be. <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's hard to know how people would react to something like that. But we always try and think about how would this connect with the audience and making sure that there's a purpose to the content and not just posting content for the sake of posting content, making sure that there's something that people can resonate with. To that point, uh, Abby, I'm curious kind of how you do your kind of post-mortem analysis or you know, as, you, as you look at your analytics and you look, maybe you're doing it weekly, maybe you're doing it daily, maybe you're doing it monthly. But when you look at your, 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 your previous posts, both from your part of the organization as well as other parts of the university, how are you kind of scoring that and what insights are you trying to glean from, you know, is past performance indicative of future results? Mm -hmm. I am mainly looking at our engagement numbers because I think, you know, it's great if you have 100,000 followers, but if only 150 of them are actually interacting with your page, it just doesn't really matter. Um, I'm looking at week over week, particularly with these content themes that we have right now. Um, I recently had a new member or a, a new person join my team who's actually our digital analytics manager now. And so we'll be putting together some reports that look at each of our themes that we have and looking at, okay, which theme performed better? Can we see some trends within things because we've already started to adjust a little bit. We are trying to play around with some different templates that maybe we could let people across campus use. Um, as we suspected, they had too much text on them and they weren't performing very well on Instagram. And so we adjusted them to make sure also that because we want to know that if there's someone in a department that they're not only the office manager, but they're running social media and they're also running the website. If I can give them a template that they can use, then their, their content looks just as good as my department's does too. So as we're rolling out this content, we're trying to make sure that we can right size it so other departments can use it as well. Mm -hmm.